Hello, Conrad and Lucy and Caleb. Iron Man and I are here today to tell you another great Iron Man story. Are you ready for it? This time he's fighting a villain called the Crimson Dynamo. And here's a picture of him. He's red, obviously. That's another word for crimson, all right? And he's more powerful than Iron Man. So how can the golden superhero ever defeat the Crimson Dynamo? We've got a little insert here where we see Tony Stark donning his armor. He says, it is time for Anthony Stark to become Iron Man once again. I pray this will not be my final battle. Look at how powerful he is. He's destroying a rocket as it takes off. Here's kind of a coming attraction as we see Iron Man in the air chasing after a rocket. And here are bystanders. We see Happy and Pepper that are watching. Iron Man says the rocket isn't falling naturally. Someone, something is causing this and I've got to find out who. As Iron Man desperately streaks skyward, he is amazed and shocked for the Y-69 rocket he invented as scientist Anthony Stark is not merely carrying three terrified test pilots to their doom, but never has Iron Man seen an object fall this way, plunging and twisting crazily like a helpless leaf in a storm. But to learn what Stark's rocket has been sucked into and why it is marked for disaster, we must go back two weeks, back to Red Russia. All right, so this is just a teaser. Let's see what's leading up to this. And here are uh, Happy Hogan and Pepper Potts and bystanders. They're hollering, look, Iron Man's here. He's trying to reach the Y-69 before it crashes. He won't make it. Those guys are as good as dead. Of course Iron Man will make it. These people have no faith. They must not read the comic books like we do, right? Okay, uh, let's, uh, let's look at Red Russia. And the editor asks, can you recognize the pudgy, scowling figure entering a strange laboratory just outside Moscow? He says, guards, follow me. It's Nikita Khrushchev. You, of course, don't remember him. He's older than I am. But nonetheless, he used to be the dictator in Russia. Okay. Uh, the editors say, if you don't know who this fella is, then you know nothing about the Cold War. For this stocky fellow is the Mr. Big of the Iron Curtain. Here we are, Excellency, says the soldier, the laboratory of the Crimson Dynamo. Khrushchev says, how I hate this Professor Vanko, and I fear him. But Vanko is the world's greatest expert on electricity, so I must regretfully use him and not liquidate him. Vanko says, ah, comrade leader, I am honored by your presence. Stop lying, Vanko. I am aware of your arrogance. You think you're the cleverest man in the nation, even more ingenious and important than I. Vanko says, I, more important than our glorious leader? Surely you jest. Of course, he's being sarcastic. I never joke, Vanko, but I'm not here to match wits. You're supposed to give me a private demonstration of some new scientific discovery. Get on with it. At once, Your Excellency, says Vanko. First, I must don a peculiar costume. And there he is in his outfit. Khrushchev says, Peculiar? You look ridiculous, Vanko, like a human dynamo. Precisely what I am, comrade. I'm all wired up to perform electric miracles. You'll be uh, shocked at my powers. All right, he's being a little punny here. After spending years experimenting on myself, 
I now have the ability to control electricity in any of its forms. Step this way, please. Look, he walks kind of awkwardly in that big suit. It's even bigger uh, and more clumsy than Iron Man's uh, outfit. But look, speaking of Iron Man, there he is. Khrushchev says, Iron Man, by Lenin's beard, you have lured me into a trap, Vanko. Get him. Nonsense, retorts Vanko. Tell your guards to lower their weapons. That figure is a mere robot operating by my remote control. I simply press a button and he shuffles forward. Clank, clank, clank. But why toward me, you idiot? Iron Man will destroy me. Or is that what you want? To assassinate me? Boy, Khrushchev is really afraid of Vanko. Well, we are nervous and suspicious today. No, comrade, I am merely demonstrating what I can do to Iron Man. And look, Khrushchev is shaking like a leaf. But the Crimson Dynamo just uh, opens up his palm and pushes a button. The robot exploded, hollers Khrushchev. Exactly, answers Vanko. At the push of a tiny button, my rheostat emitted enough volts of electricity to short circuit every electronic contraption Iron Man possesses. The room! And so the Iron Man uh, robot explodes. Then, says Khrushchev, you could blow the real Iron Man to bits? Yes answers Vanko, provided I've lined up the proper frequencies and the other technical matters you wouldn't understand. Now, observe that tank. Err, clank, clank, clank. It's advancing toward me. Khrushchev is afraid again. Correct, says uh, Vanko, yet there is no one inside. I alone control it. The soldiers run. They say, we'll go get some help, your excellency. Guards, come back. It's following me. The tank is after me. Clank, clank. Clank, clank, clank. And look, Khrushchev says, I'm trapped. And the tank is coming closer and closer. Vanko, you diabolical counter-revolutionist. Such panic from the mightiest man in the communist bloc, very unseemly comrade, uh, says Vanko sarcastically. But the tank, the tank, I'll take care of the tank, says Vanko. It will stop exactly two inches in front of you. See, now step this way, your excellency. You did it. It obeyed you as if it were alive. You've seen nothing yet. Watch, I'm firing an electric bolt from my fingertips, which will completely destroy the steel monster. Bam! Impressed, says Vanko. No. Totally, says Khrushchev. But he thinks, in fact, Vanko is so powerful, he may one day turn against me. However, his electric genius Shall serve, mm, shall serve me well before I eliminate him. What a sneaky character. Have you heard of Anthony Stark? Asks Khrushchev. Who has not? Stark is America's greatest weaponry scientist. Without him, the American defense effort would be far weaker. Da, yes. Thus, by stopping Stark's operations, the U.S. would lag behind us in the arms race. However, none of our agents have been able to sabotage Stark because he's always guarded by Iron Man. Can you defeat the real Iron Man as you did that robot of Iron Man? What do you think, comrade? Answers Vanko. I think you can do most anything, my friend. Go to America, wreck Stark's projects, and get rid of Iron Man. This has been what I have been slaving for, comrade leader. A chance to prove I'm the most powerful man on earth. You shall soon have Iron Man's real head. Excellent, says Khrushchev, and I shall reward you handsomely for it. But then he thinks, by removing yours 
Oh my, Khrushchev is not a very trustworthy character, is he? And so, two weeks later, at Anthony Stark's main testing ground in the United States, uh, Happy is there with Pepper. Happy says, me, I wouldn't go up on one of those things that they gave me, Fort Knox, which means a lot of gold. Pepper says, naturally not, Happy. If you had any real courage, you'd be heavyweight champ now instead of Mr. Stark's chauffeur. Ooh, tacky. Boy, answers Happy, with friends like you, Pepper, I don't need enemies. For your information, freckle face, I gave up the ring because I didn't want to hurt anybody. She says, anybody named Happy Hogan, you mean. Aw, oh, you'd probably find fault with Iron Man. And speaking of Iron Man, I'd feel a lot better if he was here now, just in case something goes wrong with that missile the boss is launching. Well, there's Tony Stark, and he thinks, hmm, Happy may have something there. I'll head for my office and change to Iron Man, but I need a pretext to leave. Uh, says Tony, I have to phone the Pentagon. Meantime, conduct the launch according to plan. Yes, sir, Mr. Stark. Moments later in his office, I'll be dressed by the time the missile is fired. This collapsible, extensible armor is a snap to get in and out of. At the same time, nearby a weird figure prepares to destroy both the missile and Iron Man himself. Look, somehow the Crimson Dynamo has got to America and he's observing the launch. Ah, he says, there goes Stark's multi-million dollar investment now to use my electrical powers to affect the plane circuits and cause a disaster. Then, as many anxious eyes watch the vaulting missile, Holy cats, uh, says one of the astronauts. Look at those dials revolve. Every electric circuit is out of whack. We're diving back to Earth. No, it's not a dive. We're spinning, twisting, falling, all at the same time. These two pilots are in trouble. It isn't possible. Stark triple checked all systems. Stark, he failed and we'll pay with our lives. But here comes Iron Man. I've got to save those men, that missile, no matter what. And as the people below look, uh, they say, look, Iron Man's up there, but can he reach the falling ship in time? Only one thing to do, meet the craft in mid-air and lessen the speed of its descent. This way I can buffer the fall so the men aren't injured. I did it. They're safe. Wham. Iron Man managed to slow the ship down, but he took the full brunt of the impact himself. The pilots are relieved that Iron Man saved their lives. Look at the way he's staggering. It almost knocked him out. It would have killed any other living being. We owe our lives to that guy, whatever or whoever he is. And so the pilots are grateful. And here's uh, the Crimson Dynamo looking on. He says the leader was right. Iron Man hovers around and protects Stark's inventions like a one-man army. He just frustrated a perfect job of sabotage, but he can't be at all of Stark's plants at once. Presently, after Iron Man leaves and Stark reappears, uh, one fellow says, I've never seen anything like it, Mr. Stark. Every electrical connection, every piece of electrical machinery is burned to a cinder. But how, asks Stark, why? What could have affected all our electrical apparatus? Then as the days and weeks pass, the Crimson Dynamo secretly adds to the mystery at Stark's plants all around the country. Kaboom! Zzzz, kaboom! Great guns! The rocket exploded seconds after it left the pad. It's a good thing we only had robots aboard. 
because Tony Stark can't be everywhere. Iron Man can't be everywhere uh, to save every test. Another day, I've never seen anything like this before. All our electrical equipment has burst into flame. Zzz, zzz, zzz. And a worker says, we'd better get out of here before we're trapped. Kaboom! Elsewhere, kaboom! It's the same story at all of Stark's plants. Ha! Says the Crimson Dynamo. This is the tenth plant I've ruined. Yet nobody, not even the brilliant Stark himself, can figure out what's causing these mysterious fires. That weekend, as a stunned Tony Stark surveys the damage of yet another plant in his industrial complex, he says, this is incredible. Every enemy agent in the nation must have picked me as their exclusive target for sabotage. Uh, could be, Stark, says uh, uh, this, this fellow over here. But if they have and you can't stop them, you won't be able to deliver vital equipment to the government anymore. You'll be ruined. Are you hinting that my contracts may be taken away from me? And this is the general. He says the Pentagon has no alternative, Stark. The country's defense is at stake. If you get fouled up, we must turn to other companies. Oh, no. So the Crimson Dynamo is not only after uh, Iron Man, but he's after Tony Stark and his defense uh, uh, contracts. As still more factories are raised, Strange whispers begin to circulate in Washington, D.C. A funny idea occurred to me, Senator. Isn't it a little too coincidental that only Stark's plants are being sabotaged? Are you saying that Stark may be deliberately sabotaging his own plants? That's a stupid idea. If Stark is a communist agent, look at the sweet spot he's in. First, he grabs at dozens of government contracts. This makes the U.S. heavily dependent on his industrial empire for strategic weapons and research. This is ludicrous. Uh, this senator is accusing Tony Stark of treason against the United States, destroying his own plants. That's a crazy idea. Then he wrecks his own plants. Result, no deliveries, wasted research and experiments. We fall behind the communists. By George, if you're right, we have to investigate Stark thoroughly. Days later, at Stark's main office in Flushing, New York, Well, little friends, says Stark to Pepper and Happy, we made all the headlines. The government is losing confidence in us. All our contracts may be withdrawn. In which case, says Happy, you lose every nickel you've got and wind up bankrupt, huh? Right, Happy. From Park Avenue Tycoon to Bowery Bomb in three short weeks. And the worst of it is, I don't know who is ruining me and my work. Boy, says Happy, if I had any brains, I'd take my walking papers right now. Happy is threatening to walk out on this cushy job. Well, but then he says, I'm too handsome to have brains also, so I guess I'll stick with you till the end, boss. Me too, Mr. Stark, says Pepper. Somebody has to keep happy from driving you nuts. Thanks, kids, says Mr. Stark. I'll never forget this. Someone is gunning for me, thinks Stark. That's for sure. But who? If he'd only show himself or make some telltale slip up, I could go after him as Iron Man. Well, here he is as Stark helplessly tries to fathom the unknown. The unknown has Iron Man very much on his mind. 
and Vanko says, I've damaged Stark's plants, but I'm still not satisfied. Not once at any of the other factories did Iron Man come forth to protect Stark's property. And it's Iron Man I want to destroy even more than Stark's industrial empire. My hunch is that Iron Man is right here at Stark's research center protecting it. And so Vanko puts on his crimson dynamo uh, armor. And he says, anyway, I'll soon find out. I'll head straight for the plant and challenge Iron Man. If I defeat him, I'll return home a national hero, powerful enough to replace even the leader himself. Crack! And so he shoots off his finger weapon and uh, it says danger. Fence electrified. High voltage. But that, of course, won't uh, bother a man who can control electricity. The electrical lines holler Stark. They're short-circuiting and causing fires as they did in my other plants. That means the saboteur is attacking us here. Happy, Pepper, alert the guards. Right, boss. So they run out of the office. And Stark thinks, meanwhile, I'll switch to Iron Man. This is my chance to pay off a few debts. So very soon, Tony Stark switches into his... Uh, Iron Man armor and he gets prepared to fight he thinks as Stark I'd be trapped in this flaming room but as Iron Man I can smash right through the wall to the outside crash in the next moment and he thinks there he is that must be the mysterious saboteur he must be awfully sure of his powers to come knocking at my front door Crimson Dynamo says, Iron Man, at last, now to line up your frequency. And so he's messing with his belt. He's trying to figure out the electronic frequency that Iron Man has. Iron Man thinks, hmm, judging by his acts of sabotage, that character possesses vast electrical powers. He might do to me what he did to my plants if I let him... The dynamo thinks there now to emit the electrical voltage that will destroy Iron Man inside his metal shell. Gasp! Something's wrong as he shoots off his powerful electrical ray. He says something's wrong. My electrical bolts are not affecting Iron Man. No chum, answers Iron Man, because I use my transistor power to set up an electrical force field to shield me from your electrical onslaught. Crack? Nothing happens. Then, says Dynamo, I will electrify the ground underneath your metal boots. That will finish you. Crackle. But Iron Man says, wrong again. Not when I'm airborne. Even you cannot defy scientific law. But now, my crimson friend, your powers can't affect me. The static I'm emitting interferes with all your electric signals. And uh, Dynamo thinks, blast Iron Man, I never counted on this. If he's invulnerable to my electricity, I'll have to find a way to match his strength. Suppose you clear up one mystery, asks uh, Iron Man, you destroyed my plants, right? Of course, uh, answers the Dynamo, I am Professor Vanko, whom our leader calls the Crimson Dynamo. But sabotage alone will not satisfy me. I have vowed to destroy Iron Man. So he confesses that he's the one who has been sabotaging Stark's plants. Ah, and Iron Man thinks there, I took down the Crimson Dynamo's confession on my tiny ultra sensitive tape recorder. Now I can prove I'm not responsible for the sabotage. But that gives me an idea. All communists are chronically suspicious of each other. Hmm. And so he flies off, but Dynamo says, are you such a coward that you must flee from me? Well, you're not exactly my idea of the perfect playmate. And then, Dynamo asks, why are you uprooting that tree? Rip. 
So with his power, he's actually pulling a tree out of the ground. For the same reason, I'm felling these oaks with a few karate wax. Chop, 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 chop. So he's chopping down trees and pulling up trees. What is he doing? You must be mad. I'm thinking the same thing. Yep, mad is all get out for what you did to Tony Stark. And now, Buster, you're going to pay for it. Crash. And so he's knocking down these trees. What for? Have you ever been imprisoned inside of a square of fallen trees? Wait, says the dynamo. Don't. I'm trapped. Look, that's what he had in mind. He knocked down all of these trees and encircled the dynamo. Blast you, Iron Man. Where are you going now? Does Kennedy tell Khrushchev? You'll find out soon enough. And so he's flying away, but he's leaving the Crimson Dynamo trapped. Minutes later, as Iron Man reappears, he picks up the Dynamo. He's strong enough to carry him. The Dynamo asks, where are you taking me? To Flushing Bay, answers Iron Man, where we're going for a little swim. A swim? If we hit the water, says uh, the Dynamo, the shock will electrocute both of us. Electricity and water don't mix. Oh, this is very dangerous. Iron Man says, who cares? As long as I make sure you never menace us again, since we cannot defeat one another, we'll both pay the price for failure. No, no, wait. I don't want to die. Stop. I surrender. You win. So the dynamo surrenders to Iron Man, who says, now you're beginning to make sense. By the way, I'm intercepting a radio message from behind the Iron Curtain right now on my built-in receiver. It might, it might interest you to eavesdrop with me. There's a tiny pair of earplugs. Tune in and learn your reward for trying to destroy me. It will show you how trustworthy your leader is. And so here's a voice saying, remember, comrades, seize Vanko the instant he returns and machine gun him. I cannot take any chances of the Crimson Dynamo being more popular than I, so Vanko must be liquidated. This voice seems to be ordering uh, Vanko's death. The unscrupulous scoundrel says uh, Vanko. So death was to be my reward for, to ser for serving him. Iron Man thinks, poor Vanko, he doesn't know he really heard my voice, not his leader's. When I left Vanko momentarily, I quickly re recorded the speech he just heard on my tape machine. I was certain that he'd believe it because he knows how treacherous all communists are. And so Tony Stark deceived uh, Vanko into thinking that Khrushchev was going to assassinate him. Thank you, Iron Man, says Vanko. You have saved my life. I realize now that my scientific genius has been at the service of a savage, double-dealing system. And uh, so Iron Man thinks my ruse worked. Now for a real twist. As one of the world's most As one of the world's most brilliant experts on electricity, why don't you defect to the United States? Give your talent to a nation which appreciates men of genius and allows them to work on projects to aid mankind, not to destroy others. And so Vanko says, I accept your offer, Iron Man, and to show my good faith, a red spy network is holding a fortune in gold for sabotage purposes. I'll lead the FBI to the ring and use that gold to rebuild what I've destroyed. And then uh, Iron Man says, and I'll guarantee you a top job with Stark's company, running your own electrical research department. Okay, so what an interesting twist. Vanko uh, now defects to the United States and will work for Tony Stark instead of trying to defeat him. Finally, at Stark's plant, Happy says, 
Get me an eye doctor. I'm seeing things. Iron Man acting buddy-buddy with that red saboteur. You're wrong, Happy, says Iron Man. He's been promoted from enemy saboteur to top research man for Anthony Stark. And halfway around the world, here's Khrushchev. He's throwing things and breaking things up against the wall. Idiots! Traitors! There's no one I can trust. Vanko is now sharing his great knowledge with the accursed Anthony Stark. But it is all Iron Man's fault. Once again, the hated American defender has foiled my plans. But next time shall be different. Next time I shall bury Iron Man. Well, we'll see if that happens. All right. Well, the editor says wrong, comrade. Next time, Iron Man has an entirely different, extra-long, 18-page epic adventure as he battles the mysterious Melter. Don't miss it. The mysterious Melter? Who is that? Well, there he is. All right, the mysterious Melter has a ray gun that shoots out of his chest that can melt iron and what is Iron Man going to do against an enemy like that? Well, we'll have to wait and see, won't we? All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the story of the Crimson Dynamo. And so, for now, Iron Man and I say bye-bye. We'll see you next time.